So we got a hold of a um, a local distributor. Their, it's their house brand of Woofer. And I, I just went and bought, I buy the dead ones. So, and I bought it just for the frame. But as it turns out, it works. So I just went ahead and took the badging off the back, took the dust cap off, did a sweep on it. Again, best $100 I ever spent. Uh, FS was like a 39, too high. Added a little bit of mass and a, a nice load of uh, epoxy. And let's go ahead and do a sweep on it again, see where we're at. Ooh, let me see. Thirty, yeah, we're at thirty-one, thirty-two. So, and that should be fine. I, got, I still got to put. I'm going to put an inner cap on it, and then we're going to do the uh, fancy carbon fiber as the outer cap, and then there it is. And then I'll still sell it for cheap, maybe like two hundred dollars. So again, pretty good deal for. I think I paid thirty dollars for the whole thing. Put a fifteen dollar dust cap on it, sell it for two hundred. That's a pretty good deal. You can do that too, again, but you got to invest in certain tools. Um, there is a link in the description for the the latest version, and um, I was talking to the president of Edge over in China, and Edge, through their brand Recoil, is going to be introducing more like an SMD1. I don't think you can do teal small parameters, but I think that would be really, really awesome, and it should be under $200. I don't know. We haven't gotten the details yet. They're still working on it. They asked for my input on it. And this is some of the um, I don't know, housekeeping, I guess I need to straighten out is my relationship with recoil is whether or not I'm I'm valued or not. And if my expertise is being used or not. So but I'll, I'll go a little deeper into that. Um, I wanted to show you some other stuff today, but that's one of the reasons why I'm not doing any uh, recoil evaluations right now. It's not that I'm on strike, it's just that, again, um, if I'm being pressured to, say, uh, bring down the the tab that I have with recoil or even edge, I don't have time for videos. It's as simple as that. Um, I have time to promote the stuff that I'm working on. And again, the, the channel isn't necessarily about promotion. Um, it's just one of those synchronicity things where it's like, I can teach you something, it's entertaining, uh, and it, you know, whatever, it's, it's good for the channel, it's good for the brand, it's good for the community, that's what I want to promote. So this self-promotion stuff that you see with, um, what is his name, Dickhead, the bass head, um, and JP, uh, even, what's his name, DIY Audio Guy, uh, they get into that, it's really gross. Uh, the self-promotion, you know, the uh, uh, come, come buy my stuff. I, I, I don't ever want to do that to you guys. Now, if I offer a solution that nobody else has and it happens to be cheaper than everybody else, synchronicity. That, that's where I want to be. I, d I don't want to ever leverage anybody because I'm important. I don't want to leverage anybody because I only have the, you know, the only device. I just want to be nice to each other. And again, synchronicity. If, if we can work together everybody wins. That's what I'm talking about. So, but as far as this woofer, three inch voice coil, um, a little undersized on the magnet, but, uh, I'm sure it's still good for probably, I would put it equivalent to like a punch, uh, HX2, which they rate at 600 Watts, which I think this one is, uh, they rate this one at 1200 Watts, which is again, pushing it. I would put it more towards about 850 to 900 Watts RMS, uh, simply because it does have a three inch voice coil. And I think some of the older versions went with a two and a half inch voice coil. That's what I have a whole bunch of, uh, that we bought dead. And then we have them ready to go. That was the, um, <laughs> what did I call it? LaFag? LaFag audio. <laughs> those, th those were those. I still have some of those. If you still want to buy them, they're, they're fine. I'll, I'll build them out for you. It's, but it's basically equivalent of a punch P3. Uh, it's actually a little beefier than a punch P3. So, but anyways, the newer versions of these uh, woofers come with a three inch voice coil, which is better for power handling. It's not necessarily better for BL force. Um, let me do the TSPs since I got them here. Let me put some mass on this. And then I'll just make this into a, a whole video just about this woofer.
All right, so VAS is still a little big, and I think that's because of the um, uh, the weakness of the magnet. What I'd love to do is try out the new magnetizer and then see if that changes uh, by increasing the QES, the, the Q electrical, making it more sensitive. Uh, oh, let me, let me show you guys on that real quick. There's been a lot happening. I just, I've been trying to focus on uh, production so that I can get caught up so that I'm not always behind the eight ball. So I had uh, uh, David remove the, the housing and then there was a bunch of, you know, safety bullshit lights on the front. I'm like, we don't fucking need those. So let me show you this real quick. So what it is, is this is steel laminate. It's a huge, what's called C core, because it's in the shape of a C. So it goes from here, it goes down, and then it comes up. And then at the tips, there are huge uh, coils. So there's a coil here and a coil there. There's also coil windings over there, if, if I remember right. And they go like that. And then what happens is you energize that one and it relates to this one. I think it could be that these are the coils that get energized and then they're wired out of phase so that way they work with one another. So this one would be like positive is up and then this one is also positive up or so. So they work together, that's the whole idea. But yeah, and this is the no jump. That's why a lot of people like these, the C cores, uh, but you need three phase, which I don't have and I don't wanna use either a mechanical adapter or even a, a MOSFET based adapter and so what I'm gonna do is use this discharge uh, bank. So new, this one is good for like, probably I think 190,000. And then I would love to get pricing for this because I think there's only a few Asian company, uh, countries that make this type anymore, but this is probably the most popular type that you're gonna find in the US at like some sort of industrial show or uh, surplus place because nobody, nobody does, uh, especially a magnetic type of uh, manufacturing here in the US anymore. And so what I'm going to do is actually couple these two together. So then it's worth about, I mean, if you find a machine like that, oh my God, you're talking about $350,000 worth of shit. So, but on the balance sheet, I'm going to go ahead and put it down for 150 solid because it is used, you know, whatever. You can put it depreciation in it or whatever. So, but this is what I want to use uh, to help uh, expand into Texas to use as collateral, either to get a, an SBA loan uh, uh, or something so, but this is, this alone is worth a lot of money uh, and it's not going anywhere. It's not something somebody can just walk out with. So, but um, we'll be doing that more. And so that way, it, the reason that they, a lot of people have those is because there's no kick to it. Uh, each coil um, sort of zeroes out the other one. Um, now I did watch David Moore of PSI. Uh, they had a version of this at there at RE Audio. And when you, when you turn it on, you can make a nail stand up, which is kind of a cool trick, but we're using it as a discharge type. So th the way that this thing worked is took three phase in, rectifies it to DC, and then runs it through their high voltage, probably you know about 450 even. Again, I don't know. Uh, I think these are resistors, just really, really big resistors. Um, it's not like there's a manual to this. And this one I picked up from Concept as part of the deal. Um, and I'm glad I, you know, it'll pay for everything. Uh, cause I think, was it 55? Yeah, we got everything from concept for only 55 grand. And then I made, um, uh, weekly payments through cash app to, uh, Ed Lou, who I didn't know was like worth millions in real estate. And <laughs> this is just a side project to him. He was very kind to finance me. And, uh, we went, I, I fulfilled that promise to him. And so now these are assets that have been paid for and they're not, I, I need to put them to work. And so the way that you can do that is you leverage them, basically put them up for, you know, pawn, hawk. Uh, and usually it's a conservative rating, sometimes 50, sometimes even something like a URL or a piece of artwork, you would value it like a 20% value, loan to uh, value to loan ratio. Um, and so even at 50%, which is 150,000, that's still a very good value. So you see what I'm saying? Again, the bank doesn't really want the stuff. They just want you to make good payments. And so I'm like, okay, well, that's what I need to do. So, but I wanted to show you that uh, so that the, it's no jerk. See, like this one, this is an open end coil. And when you discharge into that, it either pushes it up, depending on where it is, north or south of the equator. Um, if it's right in the middle, uh, it won't move at all. But if you're just even a little up, and in fact, even the, the more up you are, the more it kicks, and then if you're below the equator, it'll 
kick down. And the reason I don't like using it is because um, I like to run it more than, I like to run it at a thousand volts. So the bank is good for about 1500 volts. Um, and I like to usually run it at 1100. And when you do that, it, I still do double zaps. I, I, you know, because when you zap it the first time, it, it aligns the, the I don't, they're not the molecules, I forget what it is, inside the ferrite. Um, and then I do it again to make sure it's been completely saturated. And I typically do that at about 1100 uh, volts. You can do it at about 500 volts to reach saturation, but then you have to do it like two or three times. And again, it's way more, the, it's more, the voltage is higher than the saturation point on the, the material, whether it's neo or ferrite. In this case, it's ferrite, which is also known as ceramic. But um, one of the problems is that if you don't get it exactly right on the equator, um, it can pull down. Sorry about that. I'll finish this up. I got to get busy. Um, so, but um, the the motor force, the electrical EMF, the electrical motor force, it's so strong that it'll break that frame. No problem. The cast aluminum frame, just shatter it. So that's why I'm, I tend not to like to use this one. If you look at the one that they uh, that um, Jacob has uh, there at um, Sundown, uh, they actually built in padding to the inside of it to kind of cushion it because they know you're going to be off center. They know you're not going to be at the equator. So the way to another way to do it uh, to avoid all that is just to have a big coil at top and bottom. But this one is very expensive, uh, and I will probably have the most expensive magnetizer in America. Um, but you put the woofer in, the, in between, you zap it, it doesn't move, and then it's saturated and it's good to go. So that's a better, this is a better setup for uh, production, especially because we don't have three phase to run this on its own. So love you guys. I'll talk to you later.